Welcome to yet another useful video for those preparing for CBT. In this video we have included 25 multiple choice questions with answers. Besides, each answer comes with an answer reference, and that will help you to answer any other questions related to the same topic. We recommend you to take an online test after completing the section and check your score. Options will be shuffled and given when you take an online test, and this challenge will really help you to thorough the answers. You can take test from the first link in the description. Question 1. What would be the indication to use physiological scoring systems or early warning scoring systems in clinical practice? Option A. It helps the nursing staff to accurately predict the patient dependency on a shift-by-shift -shift basis. Option B. The system provides an early accurate predictor of deterioration by identifying physiological criteria that alert the nursing staff to a patient at risk. Option C. These scoring systems are carried out as part of a national audit, so we know how sick patients are in the United Kingdom. Option D. It enables nurses to call for assistance from the outreach team or the doctors via an electronic communication system. Right answer is option B. The system provides an early accurate predictor of deterioration by identifying physiological criteria that alert the nursing staff to a patient at risk. As we know, the early warning scoring system is used in clinical practice to allow early recognition of the deteriorating patient. Question 2. Why is it important that the patients are effectively fasted prior to surgery? Option A. Reduce the risk of vomiting. Option B. Reduce the risk of reflux and inhalation of gastric contents. Option C. Prevent vomiting and chest infections. Option D. Prevent the patient gagging. Correct answer is option B. Reduce the risk of reflux and inhalation of gastric contents. Well, methods used to minimize regurgitation and aspiration involve control of gastric contents. So the accepted method is preoperative starvation. Question 3. Choose the professional responsibilities of the qualified registered nurse in medicines management from the below. Option A. Making sure that the group of patients that they are caring for receive their medications on time. If they are not competent to administer intravenous medications, they should ask a competent nursing colleague to do so on their behalf. Option B. The safe handling and administration of all medicines to patients in their care. This includes making sure that patients understand the medicines they are taking, the reason they are taking them, and the likely side effects. Option C. Making sure they know the names, actions, doses and side effects of all the medications used in their area of clinical practice. Option D. To liaise closely with pharmacy so that their knowledge is kept up to date. Answer is option B. The safe handling and administration of all medicines to patients in their care. This includes making sure that patients understand the medicines they are taking, the reason they are taking them, and the likely side effects. As a nurse it is very important to know the responsibilities in giving medication. We should educate the patient about medications, medication self-administration procedures. Prepare and administer medications, using rights of medication administration. Always review pertinent data prior to medication administration. Question 4. Which of the following is the correct answer for a nurse to take observations for adult patients in an acute hospital setting? Option A, when they are admitted or initially assessed. A plan should be clearly documented which identifies, which observations should be taken, and how frequently subsequent observations should be done. Option B, when they are admitted and then once daily unless they deteriorate. Option C, as indicated by the doctor. Option D, temperature should be taken daily, respirations at night, pulse and blood pressure for hourly. Option A is the correct answer. When they are admitted or initially assessed. When caring for a patient there should be a plan clearly documented that identifies which observations should be taken and how frequently subsequent observations should be done. You should do the physiological observations at the time of admission or initial assessment. A monitoring plan should be written that how often should record the physiological observations. Question 5. 
You are taking care of a patient with head injury and monitoring neurological observations every 15 minutes. Upon assessment you found that his pupils are unequal and one is not reactive to light. Besides, the patient is not rousable. What would be your actions? Option A, continue with your neurological assessment, calculate your Glasgow Coma Scale, GCS, and document clearly. Option B, this is a medical emergency. Basic airway, breathing and circulation should be attended to urgently and senior help should be sought. Option C, refer to the neurology team. Option D, break down the patient's Glasgow Coma Scale as follows, best verbal response V equals XX, best motor response M equals XX, and I opening E equals XX. Use this when you hand over. Correct answer is option B. This is a medical emergency. Basic airway, breathing and circulation should be attended to urgently and senior help should be sought. In particular, there can be variations seen in the recording of pupil size as well as motor weakness between assessors. Therefore, it is important that nurses and health professionals are using the tool correctly to ensure these inconstancies do not affect patient care. But in medical emergencies basic airway, breathing and circulation should be attended to urgently with the help of the senior. Question 6. Choose the accurate indication for you to set out information about a patient to the police officer. Option A, if he has a rank of an inspector. Option B, if safety of the public is at risk. Option C, if the patient may cause imminent and serious harm to themselves. Option D, if you receive a request from a police officer. Option C is the right answer. If the patient may cause imminent and serious harm to themselves. In general healthcare professionals have ethical and legal duty to protect the privacy of their patient's personal information including their medical records. You will consider to set out information about a patient to the police officer if the patient may cause imminent and serious harm to themselves. Question 7. You are looking after a patient who has just undergone an abdominal surgery four hours ago. His regular analgesics were administered two hours ago, and he is still complaining of pain. What would be your immediate and most appropriate nursing action? Option A, call the doctor. Option B, assist patient in a comfortable position. Option C, give another dose. Option D, look for a heating pad. Option B and C are the correct answers. Assist patient in a comfortable position and give another dose. In this situation the nursing action includes managing pain, maintaining fluid and electrolyte balance and comfortable position are appropriate actions. Question 8. You are checking the stock balance of controlled drugs record along with your colleague in your clinical area and observed a discrepancy. What would be your immediate response as a newly qualified registered nurse? Option A. Check the cupboard, record book and order book. If the missing drugs aren't found, contact the pharmacy to resolve the issue. You will also complete an incident form. Option B, document the discrepancy on an incident form and contact the senior pharmacist on duty. Option C, check the cupboard, record book and order book. If the missing drugs aren't found the police need to be informed. Option D, check the cupboard, record book and order book and inform the registered nurse or person in charge of the clinical area. If the missing drugs are not found then inform the most senior nurse on duty. You will also complete an incident report form. Right answer is option D. Check the cupboard, record book and order book, and inform the registered nurse or person in charge of the clinical area. If the missing drugs are not found then inform the most senior nurse on duty. You will also complete an incident report form. In the event of missing controlled medication, a production of special reports required for the analytical purpose. One person should complete the incident report, and at the same time another staff should report to the immediate nurse supervisor. Question 9. Choose the correct indication for the purpose of the NMC code from the below. Option A, it outlines specific tasks or clinical procedures. Option B, it ascertains in detail a nurse's or midwife's clinical expertise. 
Option C, it is a tool for educating prospective nurses and midwives. Option D, it will provide guidance to the nurses. The right answer is Option C. It is a tool for educating prospective nurses and midwives. The purpose of the NMC code is to support nurses and midwives within their role. The code protects people that are ill, helpless, vulnerable, and require support in care. Question 10. The signs and symptoms of shock during early stage? Stage 1 to 3. Option A, hypoxemia. Option B, tachycardia and hyperventilation. Option C, hypotension. Option D, acidosis. Option A, B and C are the correct answers. Hypoxemia, tachycardia, hyperventilation, and hypotension. Inadequate perfusion or blood flow to the body's peripheral tissue causes life-threatening hypoperfusion. Perfusion requires an intact cardiovascular system and a functioning respiratory system. The shock cascade can progress quickly if it is not recognized and properly managed at the early stage. Question 11. Why is anti-embolic stockings are considered as an effective means of reducing the potential of developing a deep vein thrombosis? Option A, they promote arterial blood flow. Option B, they promote venous blood flow. Option C, they reduce the risk of postoperative swelling. Option D, they promote lymphatic fluid flow and drainage. Correct answer is option B, they promote venous blood flow. Anti-embolic stockings are compression garments resigned to reduce the risk of deep vein thrombosis. Inactivity can cause poor circulation. Anti-embolic stockings provide just enough compression to keep your blood from pooling. However, it should be remembered that so much pressure can cut off circulation. Question 12. What is the function of addressing for effective wound healing? Option A, high humidity, insulation, gaseous exchange, and absorbent. Option B, anaerobic, impermeable, conformable, and low humidity. Option C, insulation, low humidity, sterile, and high adherence. Option D, absorbent, low adherence, anaerobic, and high humidity. Answer is option A. High humidity, insulation, gaseous exchange, and absorbent. Patients with openly dressed wounds recover more quickly from anaerobic bacterial infection than patients with occlusive wound dressing. It is important to prevent the dressing from sticking to the wound or scab. Question 13. In your opinion, what are the principles of gaining informed consent prior to a planned surgery? Option A, gaining permission for an imminent procedure by providing information in medical terms, ensuring a patient knows the potential risks and intended benefits. Option B, gaining permission from a patient who is competent to give it by providing information, both verbally and with written material relating to the planned procedure for them to read on the day of planned surgery. Option C, gaining permission from a patient who is competent to give it by informing them about the procedure and highlighting risks if the procedure is not carried out. Option D, gaining permission from a patient who is competent to give it by providing information in understandable terms prior to surgery, allowing time for answering questions and inviting voluntary participation. Option D is the right answer. Gaining permission from a patient who is competent to give it by providing information in understandable terms prior to surgery, allowing time for answering questions and inviting voluntary participation. Informed consent is a process of communication between you and your healthcare provider that often leads to agreement or permission for care, treatment, or services. Every patient has the right to get information and ask questions before procedures and treatment. Question 14. What is the sign of dehydration in an elderly patient? Option A, diminished skin turgor. Option B, hypertension. Option C, anxiety attacks. Option D, pyrexia. Option A is the correct answer. Diminished skin turgor. Symptoms of dehydration in older adults may sometimes be difficult to recognize. If elderly may be dehydrated, you can check for a decrease in skin turgor or elasticity by pulling up skin on the back of the hand for a few seconds. 
If the skin does not return to normal almost immediately, it could be a sign of dehydration. Question 15. What is the indication of the proper use of Zimmer frame? Option A, using a one-point gate. Option B, using a two-point gate. Option C, using a three-point gate. Option D, using a four-point gate. Correct answer is option C. Using a three-point gate. In three-point gate, both crutches and affected legs are advanced together, and then the normal leg is moved forward. Question 16. You have observed an IV catheter insertion site with erythema, swelling, pain and warm. What would be the best nursing action? Option A. Start antibiotics. Option B. Recite cannula. Option C. Call doctor. Option D. Elevate. Option B and D are the correct answers. Recite cannula and elevate. All patients with an intravenous access in place must have the IV site checked at least daily for signs of infusion phlebitis. The subsequent score and action must be taken and documented accordingly. If the patient has pain along the path of the cannula, erythema, and in duration the VIP score will be 3, and that is medium stage of phlebitis, so the best action is to recite cannula and consider for the treatment. Question 17. In your opinion when would you initiate a wound care plan? Option A, on initial assessment of every wound. Option B, during pre-assessment and up on admission and after surgery. Option C, during wound infection, dehiscence or evisceration. Option D, during discharge. Right answer is option A. On initial assessment of every wound. As you know that the proper wound care prevents infection and other complications, and also helps to speed up the healing process with less scarring so it is important to use the wound care plan on initial assessment of every wound. Question 18. You were walking onto one of the bays in your clinical area and observed one of your colleagues wrongly using a hoist transferring a patient. What would be your response as a nurse? Option A, let them continue with their work as you are not in charge of that bay. Option B, report the event to the unit manager. Option C, call the manual handling specialist nurse for training. Option D, inform the relatives of the mistake. Correct answer is option B. Report the event to the unit manager. As we know that when we are wrongly using a hoist for transferring the patient, it will cause injury and will increase the risk of fall or overturn to the patient. For avoiding the risk of injury it is better to report the event to the unit manager. Question 19. You have discharged a patient who is diagnosed with COPD and was sent home with an oxygen prescription at 2 liters per minute. Upon your visit, you have observed that he is dyspnoic, anxious and panicking. What would be your most immediate nursing action to relieve dyspnea? Option A. Call the emergency department for the ambulance. Option B. Increase O2 rate. Option C. Tell the patient to calm down in a loud voice. Option D. Calmly instruct the patient to do deep breathing. Option D is the right answer. Calmly instruct the patient to do deep breathing. Always remember when your patient is suffering with dyspnea, allowing time with breathless patients, talking calmly to them and instructing them to breathe slowly and breathing with them can be highly effective. Question 20. In your opinion which among the below is not a component of end-of-life care? Option A. Resuscitation and defibrillation. Option B. Reduce pain. Option C. Maintain dignity. Option D. Provide family support. Right answer is option A. Resuscitation and defibrillation. We should expect compassionate care, which provides an experience of death with dignity, free from discomfort, and in an environment, which is respectful and clinically competent, and which provides our families the necessary support during the process and after. Question 21. You have observed an IV catheter insertion site with erythema, swelling, pain and warmth? What VIP score would you document on his notes? Option A5. Option B2. Option C3. 
Option D4. Correct answer is option C. 3. All patients with an intravenous access in place must have the IV site checked at least daily for signs of infusion phlebitis. The subsequent score and action must be taken and documented accordingly. Question 22. Choose the correct method of removing a negative pressure dressing. Option A, remove pressure then detach dressing gently. Option B, get TVN nurse to remove dressing. Option C, remove in a quick fashion. Option D, remove the pressure gently. Correct answer is option A. Remove pressure then detach dressing gently. Having your dressing changed regularly is very important for wound healing. In most cases the dressing will be changed by a nurse or a doctor. A person changing your dressing needs to follow aseptic techniques. Negative pressure wound therapy is a method of drawing out fluid and infection from a wound to help it to heal. Question 23. Choose the best nursing intervention for a patient who had just undergone lumbar laminectomy? Option A, move the body as a unit. Option B, move one body part at a time. Option C, move the head first and the feet last. Option D, never move the patient at all. Right answer is option A, move the body as a unit. To maintain the body alignment while turning, preventing twisting motion, which may interfere with the healing process. So we have to log roll the patient from side to side. Question 24. What is one of the severe complications during the 24 hours post liver biopsy? Option A, pain at insertion site. Option B, nausea and vomiting. Option C, back pain. Option D, bleeding. Right answer is option D, bleeding. Internal bleeding is a serious complication of liver biopsy. Bleeding may cause signs and symptoms such as pain. Before you finish the 25th question, we recommend you to take an online test after completing this section and check your score. Questions and options will be shuffled and given when you take an online test, and this challenge will really help you to thorough the answers. You can take test from the first link in the description. Question 25. In your understanding which of the following senses is to fade last when a person dies? Option A, hearing. Option B, smelling. Option C, seeing. Option D, speaking. Option A is the right answer. Hearing. Patients can still hear what is being said to them when they are nearing the end of their life. Even when the patient is unconscious and close to death, they still have their sense of hearing and can hear what their loved ones are saying to them. If you find our sample CBT questions and answer reference useful please like our video. More CBT questions will be uploaded in the coming days. To get the notification, consider subscribing our channel. Visit our YouTube channel for more clear-cut medical subjects. Thanks for watching.